Hello, Philippians. My name is Grace Green, and my family and I began attending St. Philip's earlier this year. We are normally here at the 1030 service, and you cannot miss us. I have four young kids, and usually a neighbor or niece or nephew is with us as well. Even our dog came for the blessing of the pets. Basically, whoever jumps in our minivan ahead of the service will end up here with us. And I have experienced with our motley crew the truth written on the sign outside that all are welcome. Like many in Jackson, I have driven by St. Philip's for years and knew it as the church with the pumpkins in my voting location. Last year, it became clear that we needed to find a new church home for our family. I had lived my whole life in a church tradition that forbade women from exercising their spiritual gifts. Giving sermons, distributing communion, and even reading scripture and praying in a service were the express domain of men. As I began to understand that this was wrong and harmful, we knew we needed to be in a church where women could fully exercise their gifts in service to the Lord. I didn't want to set the example for my three daughters that ministry to God was just for men. I didn't want to saddle them with the burden and shame of being a woman in a church that didn't value their voice or see them as an equal. My husband Mason grew up in an Episcopal church. It's St. Paul's in Meridian, which John Burke, who has known and loved him since the day he was born. So he felt familiar with the Episcopal church and could recite from memory many of the prayers and confessions of faith. I, on the other hand, felt as many do for the first time in a liturgical service, trying to figure out when to stand or kneel or when to speak in the responsive readings. But the liturgy has been so beautiful and healing to me as I recite prayers and creeds that have been said for Christians throughout the ages. Susan Beebe asked me if I would share for the stewardship season, noting how our family was so new to St. Philip's, yet had jumped into church life with both feet. I eagerly said yes, as we have been lavishly loved by this congregation from the moment we first entered the doors. In the spirit of the stewardship theme of rooted in abundance, I can honestly say we have never been in a space, religious or not, that has loved us so abundantly from the very start. My first Sunday at St. Philip's, I came without my family to do some reconnaissance work ahead of bringing everyone. (laughs) From my background where women were not allowed to serve in leadership in the church, it was immediately healing to have the Reverend Molly McWade minister the gospel and sacraments to me. After the service, Lori McIntyre, a member member of the vestry, introduced herself and asked if it was my first time to the church. She made me feel so welcome and asked if I had any questions or needed help. I mentioned that I had four young children and asked about the programs for kids. Lori introduced me to Lisa Soche, and Lisa took me on a tour of the church, showing me the kids' bags for the service in the narthex, the room for children's chapel, the nursery for the youngest congregants, and she answered all of my questions. She took my contact info and followed up with an email with information about the children's ministries. As a side note, my son refers to St. Philip's as Miss Lisa's church. (laughs) As any parent of young children will tell you, loving and caring for our children is loving and caring for us. Knowing that my children are fully welcomed in all of their childlikeness was immediately welcoming. That love for my family has extended beyond the initial welcome. From Bill Burke telling me after a service where my children were particularly rambunctious that he loved the holy commotion. And my crew can certainly bring the commotion, even if it doesn't always feel holy to me. To Molly and Les grinning at my wiggly, bouncy children as they receive a blessing during communion. To Sigrid and Jack Conway volunteering for nursery and showing me pictures of my two-year-old Phoebe to Bertie reporting what a help my oldest daughter was in Children's Chapel, to Dick David passing notes in the service with our neighbor friend who attends church with us. This congregation has loved on my family in holy ways. You are truly living out the words of Jesus from Mark 10, 14 that we heard Les preach on recently, to let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. We are newcomers to this church, having been here less than a year, But it does not feel as if we are newcomers. This church feels like home. Because of that, we have been happy to be involved in the parish by giving our time and resources. My kids have loved messy church and children's chapel. We so enjoyed our secret society dinner for newcomers at the home of Prentice Franklin and Grant Beebe. The goat roast and bluegrass mass last weekend was unlike any other religious event I've attended. And I say that in the most positive way possible. 
<laughs> I've already been in the home of numerous Philippians like Christy Dunaway who invited me over to discuss the community lunch hosted by the church. I could go on and on, but I know that our time is short. The theme of this year's stewardship season is rooted in abundance. As I think about this theme, Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 come to mind. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that all things, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I came to St. Philip's earlier this year with a spirit of deep discouragement from patriarchal Christianity, which caused me to doubt my faith in God's goodness. You all likely don't realize it, but you have loved me back to life. As Les would put it, I have fallen in holy love with this congregation Jesus tells his disciples in John 13, 35, that by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. If love for one another is the mark of a disciple of Jesus, then this church surely proclaims loudly in its words and actions who they are serving. Let us all remember that we are rooted in the abundant love of Jesus. And because of that, let us give generously as we are able. Thank you. Thank you.